Well, hello and welcome to the worship experience for this Lord's Day morning. Uh, we're so grateful for those of you who are tuning in to make this part of your morning or afternoon or, or whenever that you're able to participate and take part in worship here. We at CUMC are just delighted to be able to continue to bring this to you in this fashion at this time. World is changing, things are changing, so who knows in the future how we'll be doing this, but we're going to continue with this for a while to come for sure. This way we have a community experience, even though we're not together as a, the community of faith here at CUMC and all of our other friends and those who are tuning in taking part in this and this. As I said, we're so grateful for each and every one of you, and I hope you can sense and feel a little bit of community in the midst of this time when we can't be together. Just a couple of reminders. Be sure to print out the worship guide for this. This may have come on an email to you today, or if you've tuned into this through our website, there is a separate place where you can print out the worship guide. That has some things uh, pertinent, not only the worship today, but other information with prayers and things happening here at the church as well. So thank you again very much for this gift that you're giving yourself today. As all of us, who knows the gifts that God has to give us as well? We're opening sort of a doorway to that today by being, uh, by being attentive to what God is doing in our lives today. Be sure to watch the videos that we have hot links to and uh, particularly the music. Uh, we have some really great people here at CUMC who are still sharing their musical talents with us and we're grateful for them all. Thank you so much for what Chris has been doing and, and contemporary worship. Thank you to Connie, what she's been doing and the soloists and instrumentalists that she's been bringing in as well. So I hope you'll just Inhale and exhale and be ready for the worship experience today. Pastor Mira is going to come share her morning greetings with you today and also lead us in the beginning moments of this experience. God bless you. Hey, good morning. I'm Pastor Mira and it's great to be with you as we worship together today. We continue in our sermon series with Pastor Jim talking about living in the wilderness. And as we begin in worship, I invite you to pause the video in a few moments and join together with those around you in the opening prayer as printed on your worship guide. So let us join in the opening prayer together. Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 9, verses 15 to 23. And this passage really serves one purpose. It's to remind the listener then and us today that the natural phenomenon and the consistency of Moses' meeting with God in that tent of meeting was all about reminding us of the evidence of Israel's conviction that God was with them and that God was leading them through the wilderness and that God was caring for them in that time. As we look at this scripture, may it be a reminder that God is with us and caring for us in, this, in these days as well. Well, hello, kids. Uh, I'd love to say good to see you, and I really wish I could see you, but you can see me. I really appreciate the times that you're watching these children's chats that we have along the way. You know, I miss you very much. Uh, it's one of the highlights for me every Sunday morning to spend time with you and, and in the brief moments that we share. So I have to share this way with you, and uh, I enjoy doing it, and I hope that you pick something up along the way. You know, a lot of people have been happy and sad, uh, they've been frustrated, you know, these are emotions. You know what they are, we all have them. And a lot of people have been kind of sad and a bit depressed over these days. But I want to show you something that can take a sad face to a happy face in an instant. And you're going to be able to do it too. All right, now pay attention for these next couple of minutes together. Well, hey kids, I just have a strip of paper here and I'm gonna fold it in half just like this. You can do this at home and you might enjoy this thing. I, I fold it in half just like this and I'm gonna draw a picture of a sad face. And you can draw any kind of sad face that you wanna draw on it. My face is gonna look like this. These are the eyes here. Don't laugh at my picture. I'm not very good. There's the nose and here's the mouth. All right, now we have to give the person hair. 
something I don't have very much of, but this person's going to have a lot of hair. There, that's their hair. They have purple hair today. There's purple hair. It goes down over the side, over the side, just like that. Now, what we're going to do is take this piece of paper and I'm going to fold it just like this. See, I'm going to fold it just like this. And now, you can't see it very well, but I can see the picture I drew right on top of here. So I'm going to draw another one, another picture here. I'm going to trace this so I get it pretty close like the first one. Except this time, the person is going to be smiling, just like that. And we have to give them hair. Be sure to give, be sure to give them hair. Yeah, there's hair. And got this hair that comes down over the sides, just like this. Yep, just like that. Okay. And now what you do is you take a pencil. You take a pencil and we're going to roll this up. But I have to get a piece of, piece of tape. Just a wee little tiny piece of tape like this. All right. And I start here. And I just tape, take this piece of tape. I'm going to tape the end of the top sheet of paper here to the pencil. Just going to tape it to the pencil. And then I'm just going to roll it up. See me? I'm just trying to roll this up. You might need a little help to do this part, just to get it started. And then it rolls pretty easily after that. It's rolling up just like that. Okay, it's rolling up just like that. Now, this might take a minute to get it started, but remember we're going to turn a sad face into a happy face really, really quickly. Okay, let's see if it works. It's not working real well. <laughs> Oh, that's usually, that's normal for Pastor Jim, isn't it? It doesn't quite work well. Let me try it again. Roll it up this way. And what I'm supposed to be able to do is, is, to, is, is to do this real quick. It's supposed to unroll. See, happy face, sad, happy, sad, happy, sad, happy, sad, happy, sad. It's supposed to do that by unrolling and rolling up. Oh, well, you know what I mean by it. I hope you have a happy day. Hope your day isn't like this, but that your day is just like this. Because this is the way God made us to be. Happy people, even despite the circumstances we're in. God bless you. See you next week. Well, you'll see me next week. Bye-bye. Well, in a few moments, we're going to head into a time of prayer. And before we do, on a personal note, I just want to say thank you to all of you who have prayed and followed Facebook and sent emails and cards as my daughter had surgery and is recovering. We are now back home. Um, surgery went great. Recovery is a little different than we thought it would look, but um, it, we're going to get there. And so we thank you for all your support during that time and in the weeks ahead as she continues to recover. In a few moments, you're going to hear some music on the piano. It's going to be an opportunity for you to share with God the joys, the concerns, things that are weighing you down. And as you do, we hope that's an opportunity for you to really connect with God. And then when the music's over, we'll join together in a prayer of our congregation, praying for those in our community, those who continue to fight against this virus, and for those in our own congregation who are fighting health challenges themselves. So I invite you to get into a comfortable position. And as you hear this music, May you share with God the joys and the concerns that are upon your heart.
Last week, in honor of the National Day of Prayer, our Bishop Jeremiah Park shared a prayer with the clergy that today I pull pieces of for our pastoral prayer. So I invite you to bow your heads and let's pray together. O oh God, we come before you with prayers and tears that flow for those who are sick, for those who are hospitalized, and for those who have lost loved ones. Some among us are living in the anxiety of having lost employment due to this pandemic. Many of us are living with the anxiety of trying to protect ourselves and our families when we must be in public and realizing the mental and emotional toll that social distancing is weighing upon in all of our lives. In general, O oh Lord, communities of color and the poor have been most hurt by this pandemic. Lord, we grieve for all of these concerns. God, we pray that you would lead scientists and researchers as they work to find effective treatments and a safe vaccine that allow us to heal and to live healthy lives again. God, we know you are the God of revelation in faith and in science. Lord, we pray for our nation and our world. We pray that the division felt in our country would be healed. God, hear our prayers, that we would be united as one people, striving to work together with your love and with your peace. Lord, hear the prayers of our hearts this day. Hear the prayers for our community. And now, O oh Lord, hear these prayers for our congregation. We pray for Debbie Lane as she continues cancer treatments, for Grace Hewlett and Thomas Shover as they recover, for Betty Renshaw, the sister of Charles Reynolds, as she receives and makes decisions around cancer treatments. We pray for Nathan Hooper, the grandson of Linda, as he's being diagnosed with leukemia. We pray for Baloo, who is receiving cancer treatments, for Vani and Jim, as Jim has been diagnosed with cancer. Lord, these are the prayers of our congregation, those who are healing, who are receiving treatment. May you surround them with your grace and your love. We also pray for families this week who have lost loved ones. We add the family of Louise Sharp and the family of Bob Bear. May you comfort them. Be with their friends and family who cannot attend services, Lord, that they may grieve and they may also know of your hope and your promise that they are with you. Lord, we bring all these prayers before you. As we join together, as your disciples in this moment to pray the prayer that you taught, praying our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, hello again. I want to thank Pastor Mira and all those who have participated so far in bringing this worship experience to us today. I don't know about you, but I sensed something a little bit different last week, at least something I haven't sensed in, in a while in this uh, a pandemic crisis, we're in economic crisis as well as they're telling us. Uh, two things I seem to notice, there seem to be a heightened sense of uh, restless anger um, that, that I see being expressed um, on television and other places. And yet at the same time, there seems to be a heightened anxiety. Uh, it's as if uh, the emotionalism is is almost moving in different directions. You may have felt that as well today, or you might be on either end of that, or maybe feeling both throughout the week. That's part of the experience, isn't it? It's a, it's a real sense of wilderness, a new land for all of us. The world is upside down. That's what the woman said in the television report I was watching. She was sitting in line with hundreds of other cars waiting 
uh, for a food bank in Houston, Texas. She had tears in her eyes. She said, it, it isn't supposed to be like this. She uh, was an out of work um, hairdresser and had worked all of her life, never was without a job and suddenly without a job and without income. Her world truly was turned upside down. And so is the case for a lot, an awful lot of people. This health and economic crisis seems to march forward unabated. And as it does, the more true the woman's statement is becoming, the world does seem indeed to be upside down. And you don't need me to read an arm's length of examples because all of us are living through them in some kind of way. I'm increasingly concerned though, as many look down the road, they see things actually getting worse, not better. We will see. Educational system has been truly strained, is going in new places it's never gone before. And there's the whole economy thing. Number of people they tell us, at least the percentage of people of Americans out of work will rival and may even surpass that of the Great Depression. Healthcare system that is on the verge of being overwhelmed. And truly in rural areas, as some hospitals are declaring bankruptcy and even doctor's offices closing up. Cutbacks in the food supply. A lot of it from the realization from, that, from what we are in is now, well, we're in it for the long haul. And in those moments that we realize that we're in this for the long haul, it steals any little bit of joy or even any sense of security that we're able to carve out for ourselves. And that may be the reason that this week was a bit different for a lot of people. Sadly, we kind of got used to seeing 10, sec 10 second reports on television of people who've lost everything standing in front of what would have been their, once was their home, either by uh, destroyed by a hurricane, a tornado, a fire, or a flood. We kind of became numb to that, but this is different. As tragic as those events are, this one seems to be even worse. The scale of what we're experiencing will only be revealed in time, and we're only beginning to truly understand it. And who knows what we might be hearing in the news this summer from sub-Saharan Africa or from the Pacific Island countries. Predictions show that as many as 250 million Afri on the African continent may suffer food shortages as the weather, the pandemic, the economy, and food aid dries up. And one of the things that's become increasingly clear is that we will never go back to the way it once used to be. That we are now in a true wilderness. The world is in a wilderness. It's that place between what was and what is yet to be. Wilderness has been described as a physical experience dominated by an emotional response. And we've all been in wildernesses before, every one of us that uncomfortable and helpless place between the normal and the not yet. Maybe it was because caused by a divorce, maybe a death, change of health, maybe a loss of job. But the only thing we all share in common when we're in our wilderness experience, whatever caused it, the one thing we share in common is that we all want it to end. And the sooner the better. Three weeks ago, I joined with seven other pastors concerned about how we might best help our congregations in their personal and our collective wilderness experience that we are in. Because the church has been turned upside down too. We're being forced to rethink many things in the church, how to be the church when we cannot be together, what constitutes worship and how we will do it, what will be our future, as it's becoming more clear all the time that moving toward that time when we can all gather again in this place or in our new place may be much further away than we would like. And so we wonder who will drift away, who will stay. Our Zoom meeting resulted in a sermon series that I'm beginning today called Living in a Strange Land. We have a logo on the worship guide, our own staff member, 
Rhonda Dyson designed it as part of the CUMC contribution to this collective effort of We Ate Pastors. Logo has a bit of a sci-fi look to it, and that's on purpose because this pandemic and economic stuff that we're in is truly the stuff of science fiction novels and movies. And now we're living it. The sky is depicted as a cityscape turned upside down, black and white, colorless. That look is also on purpose. But each week we want to add one more piece of color because that is what we pastors decided we want the series to do, to bring more color, which for us represents a sense of control over our situation, because that's truly what we all feel in the wilderness, helpless against our situation. And so we want to provide handles, grab bars, any other metaphor that you want to use uh, of truths that we must not forget and practical steps that we truly need really need to take in order for us not just to stand steady in the wilderness, but to help keep us walking forward with hope as God's people. And the best way we felt as pastors to do that was to learn from the people of God who came before us and to see what they did in their wilderness experiences. And just as I say those words, you probably know the natural place for us to go was part of the scripture lesson. Go to that place of wilderness where the people of God were caught between the freedom from the bondage in Egypt, but not yet into the promised land. What they didn't expect clearly is that it would take 40 years. I hope our situation does not take 40 years. I don't think any of us think that it will. Though that wilderness experience story runs through the back of the book of Ex Genesis, through Exodus and Leviticus, parts of Deuteronomy and the book of Numbers, it's the numbers piece that gives us a look into what kept the Israelites together, at least for the most part, during that journey. Numbers 14 has a story of Rebellious, a rebellious episode when some of the Israelites decided it would be better to go back to slave and go back to Egypt and live as a slave than continue in their wilderness experience. And they decided to let Moses and the leadership know it. Among other things that the story reveals, it also reveals something about human nature, that you and I are very uncomfortable living our lives without some sense of control over it. It's that sense of control that we really desire to fulfill in our lives. What's kind of surprising is it's so important in our lives, so important that we fulfill it, that people will even choose walking away from the future God has prepared for them in order to fill this sense of control. Now, one of the constants through the wilderness experience of the Israelites were the reminders. They were visual and otherwise. Reminders of God's presence with them. And that too is what we pastors in our Zoom meetings want our congregations to know without doubt. God is with us. You know, the word Emmanuel comes to mind, God with us, that's Christmas, but it's also the truth of God that we stand on and we understand completely. Though the world has been turned upside down in so many ways, it doesn't change the reality that God is with us. God is still with us, very present with us. We know in the scriptures that he sent his own son to a spiritually and socially upside down world 2000 years ago to emphatically tell them not only what he expects, but to emphatically tell them that there's nothing they can do to escape his love, to separate them from the love that he has with them. That's what the cloud by day and the fiery pillar by night was to show the Israelites. And it's the reason that whenever they made camp, they put the tabernacle right in the middle of the camp. And it's why Moses would meet with God in his famous tent of meeting. And we think if that's what they did, 
Maybe we should too. And to me, it's this season of spring, this month of May. May and October are my favorite months of the year. Why? Because they're so visually inspiring of nature, God's handiwork. May with the beautiful deep green grass, trees moving from blossoms to leaf, flowers appearing almost new each and every day. To me, that is our cloud by day and fiery pillar by night. It's a reminder to us that God is with us. God has not abandoned us. Things are still marching forward as they should, that there is something more powerful out there than even this pandemic we're in. And what we're doing right now, this worship experience, I call this our tabernacle. That's because that's how it functions for us. It's not only a reminder of God's presence, but it's also a reminder to us of where our true life lives. We can become so emotionally pushed around by each day of each week, but when we come and center ourselves in this kind of experience, it is what the tabernacle was to do for the Israelites. And that tent of meeting that Moses would meet in, well, that's our own private devotional and spiritual lives. That's our tent of meeting whether that be for one minute or for an hour. We all need these things in our lives in these days, especially in these days, to stay spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically balanced. I sometimes call those things anchoring points, those things around which our life needs to revolve. Now, practically, living those things out um, indicate to me uh, a number of things, Th three things in particular. Um, getting into nature as much as we can into the beautiful season of the year that we're living in. If we can't get there in person, then watch some nature programs, something edifying to your soul. This is really important. I, I wish that you would consider possibly using television or the internet as a tool to bring you peace and soul satisfaction. Take control of the media inputs into your life. Don't let them control you. I think that's really important to understand. Secondly, keep weekly worship as a part of your life. However that happens for you, these experiences and who knows as we move forward how we'll be able to open up this place or the new place we're in. We're, we're constantly seeking and assessing and thinking about ways that we can, can come together in some kind of way, safely to be sure. But one of the things we need to do together is worship. It keeps again us centered. But the community needs us too, because one of the functions we have for the community is as the tabernacle to the Israelites. We're to be in the center of things, in the mix of life, not sitting on the sidelines. As we move forward into our future, CUMC cannot afford to ever sit on the sidelines in the community in which God has planted us. And number three, the third practical activity, and we've talked about this before, is personal devotional time. You know, John 1 verse 4, the Word became flesh and is dwelling among us. Did you know that the word dwelling in Greek literally means to pitch a tent? When have we heard that before? God wants us to pitch a tent with him, much as Moses pitched that tent with him so many, many years ago. And in these days, you can experiment with many ways to pitch a tent. It might be in a solitude in a private room. It might be through artwork. It might be through music. It might be in ways you have yet to discover in your life. But use this time to discover ways that you can pitch a tent with God. I simply want to close with um, what uh, pastor and author Andy Stanley has for pastors. He talks about the, the four question format for sermons. I'm going to close with that. First question, what do I want you to know? I want you to know that the wilderness experience is very normal for the in-between times in our lives when something ends and before something else begins. And I want you to know that we're a people of new beginnings. 
Why do I want you to know it? Because we must have hope. It is necessary for our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. What do I want you to do? I want you to do the practical steps to make a concerted effort to bring that into your life. Why do I want you to do it? So that the wilderness does not overtake you. Let us all learn to fully live, even in the wilderness. Now, I want to thank you so much for being part of this worship experience, because you are part of it by doing the prayers and reading the scriptures and just giving your heart and mind and attention over these next moments. Pray that the rest of your day goes very, very well for you. We thank you for all those people who are continuing to support our ministry here, whether you're giving your offerings online or whether they are coming in the mail. We are truly grateful. Office is open, but not to public traffic yet. Uh, it's from 8 to 4. And you can, uh, if we can help you in some kind of way, uh, let us know. Be sure to reach out and connect with your neighbors, your family, and your friends. And remember always, faith over fear, prayer over panic. God bless.